Good morning, seventh grade. It's Tuesday, January 12th. Let's begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you do I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, um, let's do today's warm up. Um, just like yesterday, this is one more practice problem for writing function rules. So pause the video and solve this one on your own. Okay, so let's write the function rule for this um, table of values. And remember, the first thing we're gonna do is look to see if we can find that pattern. Um, when I'm adding X is going up by one, what's happening to Y? Well, to get from three to eight, I'm adding five. To get from eight to 13, I'm adding five. So I have a pattern there. So remember this number here tells me my multiplier. So y is equal to 5x plus something. And I need to figure out that something. And remember, I'm going to try and figure out that something by looking at where x is equal to 0. And the reason we do that, think about this, you know, think about our, our rule here. If x is equal to 0, this whole thing goes away, right? So where x is equal to 0, that tells me that the addition piece, OK? All right, let me erase that because I kind of made a mess now of, of that. But that's why we're figuring out where x is equal to 0. So y is equal to 5x plus something. And again, where x is equal to 0, that tells me what the addition piece is. Because the x is 0, it, the whole 5 times um, 0 goes away. All right, so now I look at my table and say, OK, well, what's 0? I don't have 0. 0 is not in my table. So I'm going to have to figure out what, what it is at 0. What is y at 0? Well, I'm going to put 0 right there, because 0 comes right before 1. To get from 0 to 1, I had to add 1. To get to whatever y is, right? I have to add 5, because that's my pattern. OK, well, what can I add 5 to to get 3? because it's always that previous number. What does this number have to be so that when I add 5, I get 3? Well, it's 3 minus 5, or negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 will give me 3. I'm just looking at that pattern, and I worked backwards. So this number here is negative 2. My rule is y equals 5x minus 2. Okay, and I'm going to check it. I'm going to pick one of those numbers and check it. Let's look at the, I'm going to look at the last one. Well, 13, okay, if I look at this one right here, is equal to 5 times 3, because x is 3 minus 2. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 minus 2 is 13. So it works. My rule is correct, okay? It's so a nice thing about these two, when you check them, I mean, you can tell whether you've got the right answer right away or not. If it doesn't work, then you need to go back and check it and see what, or check your work and see what you did wrong, okay? All right, let's talk about today's lesson, sequences. Okay, this is it. This is the last day of uh, new material for this unit, um, looking at relations and functions. And today, we're actually going to look at writing, identifying and writing rules for arithmetic sequences. OK, and that's kind of a, that's, that's a really fancy um, term there, arithmetic sequences. All that means is it's just a set of numbers. This one's, I think these are actually easier than writing function rules, OK? So it's a sequence of numbers. Um, it, it's just numbers like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I count numbers. That's a sequence. We're going to look at different sequences of numbers and how we can write the rules for those sequences. Okay? Okay, so I went ahead and put the definition up here, and you might want to pause and write this down. 
An arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which the next number is found by adding a fixed number to the previous term. There's a lot of math language in there. So let's talk about what all of that means. And I'm gonna do that by just giving you an example. Um, and like I said just a second ago, a sequence of numbers is, is a set of numbers. Um, if I have one, two, three, four, five, that's a sequence, okay? It's a set of numbers and it's, this one's arithmetic. There are different kinds of sequences. The only kind we're gonna talk about this year is an arithmetic sequence. And that means that I get the next number in my pattern by adding a fixed number to the previous term, okay? And these are each, each of these here, these are terms, okay? That's a term, that's actually the first term, that's the second term, that's the third term, that's the fourth term, okay, and so on. So each of the numbers in the sequence is a term. I, and, and it says here again, an arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which the next number is found by adding a fixed number to the previous term. So, kind of like yesterday, we're, we're looking for a pattern. The good news about this one is though, I just said it's always addition, well, or subtraction, addition or subtraction, but it's there's no multiplication in these. The next term is found by adding something to the previous term or subtracting, okay, or adding a negative number. So let's see if we can figure out in this one, this is a pretty simple one, what is that fixed number that I'm adding each time. Well, to get from one to two, I added one. To get from two to three, I added one. To get from three to four, I added one. So that fixed number that I'm adding in this case is one. We call that the fixed number is called the common difference. which is, we call it D. And in this particular sequence, D is one, because that's what I'm adding each time to get the next term, okay? Now, a little bit more um, definition type stuff. I said each of these numbers was a term, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. We like to have a special way of, of identifying those terms, okay? In the sequence, the first term is always known as A1, okay, with a little subscript. Subscript means I, I have a little, um, um, I can't even think of the right word, just another a number down below. It's a subscript, okay, identifier down below. The second term is going to be A2. The third term is going to be the third A3 and so on. Well, I can keep going in my pattern. I've got fifth term, sixth term, seventh term, eighth term, whatever. I can go out to infinity. I can go out forever. Well, when we say we're looking at a particular term out in the future that I don't know what the number of it is, I'm going to call that the nth term, OK? So I can find any term. I could say, I want to know what the 20th term is of the sequence. The 20th term would be A20, A the 20, like A sub 20. Okay, so AN is just giving me that ability to plug in any number and to say, well, what's the 20th term? What's the 100th term? What's the 57th term? Okay, now I want you to think about if if this term is the nth term, what's the previous term? What's the term that comes right before the nth term? Well, let's think about it. If I started with, look at my third term, what's the term that comes right before the third term? It's the second term, right? It's, it's three minus one. Well, if I look at the second term, what term comes before the second term? It's the first term, right? Or two minus one. So the term that comes right before the nth term is going to be 
n minus 1. Okay, now I'm pointing that out because sometimes we want to be able to say, if I know a term, I can figure out what the next term is. So that means that the next term I can figure out if I know the previous term. Okay, I know lots of, lots of very abstract thinking here. Let's recap. My sequence is always found it's, it's an arithmetic sequence because I'm adding something to the previous term, okay? And we call that fixed number that we're adding the common difference, and we call it D, okay? That's the most important thing right now. Let's look at another example. Okay, let's look at a sequence. I've got this sequence, 10, 13, 16, 19, 22, 25, and so on. Okay, now the first question I have to ask is, is this arithmetic? How do I know if it's arithmetic? I said an arithmetic sequence is one where I add the same thing to, to get the next term. So let's look. Well, to go from 10 to 13, what did I do? I added three. To get from 13 to 16, what did I do? I added three. To get from 16 to 19, added three. It's looking good so far, let's make sure. 19 to 22, yep, and 22 to 25, yeah. So yes, this is arithmetic. So the second question then is, what is the common difference? What is it that I added to the, to the next term, to the previous term to get the next term? In this case, D is three. Okay, that's really important to know. Now, we talked about, or I mentioned that um, these are my terms. So this is my first term. This is my second term. This is my third term and so on, right? There are two different kinds of formulas that we can, um, that we can use to, de to define a sequence. There's a recursive formula, oops, okay. A recursive formula tells us how to get the next term in a sequence, okay, which is useful if you know the previous term. So if I want to find a, any term, let's say I want to find a to n, I want to find the nth term, in this particular sequence, I can get that if I know the previous term, right, which is n minus 1. And what do I have to add to that term? The common difference. That's the recursive formula. That's right there. Okay, but that's not super useful unless I know the previous term. For example, in this sequence here, I know one, two, three, four, five, I know that six terms because this is the sixth term, right? So using this formula here, I can only find the seventh term. All it's telling me is that I just add three to get the next term. But what if I wanna know like the 80th term? Well, if I don't know that I have to count them all out if I want to use this formula, and that's going to take a lot of time. So we don't use the recursive formula as much. Unless, like I said, you know the previous term. That's the only reason you use the recursive formula. What we want to use is called the explicit formula. I'm going to erase this.
Okay, the explicit formula allows us, boy, I can't write today, to find any term in the sequence. Okay. So to let's talk about. I'm gonna. We're gonna show. I'm gonna show you how we get the explicit formula, and and then you just have to know the explicit formula, and it's not hard. Um, but let's look at what happens in our um, in our table or in our in our pat our sequence here. And I'm gonna make a little table so that we can see the pattern. So the first term, okay, which is one, so the term number is one, the value of the, um, the value of the, the term in this case is 10, okay? The second term, okay, A2, is 10 plus 3, right? Which is A1 plus 3. The third term, okay, where N is equal to 3, is the previous term plus um, another three, right, or plus three. So it's going to be A2, which was 13, or A1, which was 10, right, plus three, plus three. So it's this plus another three. So we just keep adding a three, right? So the pattern here, I know this is a little tricky, is think about this is my n, right? How many threes did I add though? I added two of them. It's this is n minus one. So to find the nth term, okay, we can figure out what the nth term is if we know the first term, okay, and then we know what number of term it is, but the common difference times n minus one, because every time to get the next term, we're adding d again, okay, which is the same as multiplying at times n minus one. That's the, this is the explicit formula. This is what the formula that I use to find any value of the sequence, okay? I know this is a little tricky. You don't have to know how I got that formula. I tried to show it to you there just so you had an idea of how we got it. We got it by looking at, at the pattern and that the first term, we always, we just start with the first term. We have the first term and to get the next term we add three. Well, the second term we're adding just three. So we're adding n, three times n minus one, three times one. And we're adding three each time. So I can figure out any term if I know the, the formula. So we can, and we can write the formula as long as we know the first term and as long as we know the common difference. For this sequence that we just did, to find the nth term, the first term is 10, right? That's this right here. Plus the common difference. The common difference is what we add each time times n minus 1. So I could say, well, what's the value of the 80th term of the sequence? So this is my sequence again. Remember 10, 13, 16, 19, 22, 25. What if I want to know the 80th term in that sequence? Well, one way is you could write out all 80 terms, right? And just keep adding three each time. 
Or you could use this formula, the explicit formula, and say, OK, well, the 80th term okay, is equal to 10 plus 3 times 80 minus 1. 80 minus 1 is 79. So A80 is equal to 10 plus 3 times 79, which I'm going to have to do that off on the side. 27, yep, 237. So A80 is equal to 10 plus 237, which is 247. So if I counted out that sequence to the 80th term, the value of that term would be 247. Okay. All right. So let's do a couple of examples. Let's, um, I'm going to give you a sequence. Let's do the sequence here. 8, 15, 22, 29, and so on. Um, I want to know, is it arithmetic? And if yes, then I want you to write the formula, write the explicit formula. And I want you to find the 20th term. OK, that's what we're going to do. And this is just like your homework. This is exactly what you'll be doing in your homework. So first question was, is it arithmetic? Well, how do I figure that out? I have to look and see if, it's a, if there's a common difference. Am I adding the same thing each time? OK, to get from 8 to 15, I had to add 7. To get from 15 to 22, I add 7. To get from 22 to 29, I add 7. OK, it's arithmetic because I have a common difference, right? I'm adding the same thing every time. So the answer to the first question is yes. Second question, write the explicit formula. OK, well, we know that that formula is a n is equal to a 1 plus d times n minus 1. And this is a formula you're just going to have to memorize. OK, to get the nth term, I need to have I need to know the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. If you remember this formula, it's really easy because all the information is right there in my sequence, right? The nth term is the first term. A1 is the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. That's the explicit formula right there. OK. And then the last thing I asked was find the 20th term. OK, well, I know my formula, so let's find the 20th term. A20 is equal to 8 plus 7 times 20 minus 1. A20 is equal to 8 plus 7 times 19. 19 times 7 is. 13, right? 133, 63, yes. So the 20th term is 8 plus 133, which is 141. And that's it. OK. Let's do a couple more. Let's do this sequence. 5, 3, 1, negative, whoops, not negative 7. There we go, negative 1. OK, same thing. I want to know, um, is it arithmetic? Write the explicit formula and find the 20th term. So let's see if it's arithmetic. What do I do to get from 5 to 3? I had to subtract 2. To get from 3 to 1, subtract 2. To get from 1 to negative 1, subtract 2. Yes, this is arithmetic. Now I'm subtracting instead of adding, but that's OK. OK, as long as it's addition or subtract. Remember, subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. So it's still arithmetic. So this is arithmetic. So yes, arithmetic. So now let's write the explicit formula. A n is equal to a 1 plus d times n minus 1. I write that down every time, because if I write the formula, like the, the generic formula, every time it helps me to memorize it. And then I plug in what I know. 
Well, I don't know the nth term. A n is equal to A 1, first term, plus d, which is negative 2, times n minus 1. Now, you can write it that way, or you could write it as a n equals 5 minus 2 times n minus 1. These are the same, and it's whichever you prefer. If you would rather write it as adding a negative versus subtracting, that's fine. Okay? So that's the explicit formula. And then I wanted to find the 20th term. So a 20 is 5 minus 2 times 20 minus 1. a 20 is 5 minus 2 times 19. a 20 is 5 minus 2 times 19 is 38. So a 20 is 5 minus 38 is a negative 33 which makes sense because remember, if I look at my sequence, the number is getting smaller, right? Or more negative. So by the time I get to the 20th term, being at about negative 33 sounds about right, okay? It's always good to kind of think if your answer makes sense. One other thing I wanna point out before we do one more example is this right here. I see a lot of students want to subtract five minus two. And you can't do that. We've talked about this before. Remember order of operations. When you're simplifying, you have to do the multiplication and division before the addition and subtraction. OK, you cannot subtract the 5 minus 2. Same thing here. I'll see students want to do it right here, too. You can't do that. You need to make sure that you do the parentheses first. OK, 20 minus 1 is 19. And then you do the multiplication next. Then you can subtract, OK? So be careful with your order of operations in these. All right, let's do one more example. Um, let's do 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, et cetera. OK, so first question, is it arithmetic? So to get from 1 to 3, I added 2. To get from three to six, oh, I added three, added, added four, added five. Okay, is this one arithmetic? No. Remember, in order for it to be an arithmetic sequence, this common difference has to be the same. I have to add the same number every time. This one is not arithmetic, okay? If it's not arithmetic, you can't write the formula and you can't find the nth term. And you're going to see that in your homework. I ask you, is it arithmetic? If it is arithmetic, then you find the comment, you find the formula and you find the whatever term. I think I want you to uh, 75th term is what I'm asking in the homework. OK, but if you get one that's not arithmetic like this one, you're done. This is not arithmetic. So um, um, you don't write the formula. You just stop there. OK. If it is arithmetic, you do. You do the formula and you do the 75th term. OK? That's it. Let's talk about your homework. OK, so like I said, you have a homework assignment on writing sequence rules. It's just like what I just did in this example. You have to identify if it's an arithmetic sequence. Um, if it is, you write the explicit formula, and then you find the indicated term that I ask for, OK? Um, that's and this is the last new topic in this unit. So think about how you feel about today's lesson. Um, start thinking about other, you know, the rest of the material that we've been doing in this unit. Um, look through your old homework if you want to um, start to again think about what it is that you want the, the most practice on. Um, talk to your tutor about um, sequences, about anything else we've been studying, just to see if you need to clear things up. Um, tomorrow will be all review, and I'm assigning the review assignment tomorrow. I'm not going to solve a whole lot of problems in tomorrow's video um, because I want you to take the time to go through the review. I want to give you time on your own to go through that review and start working on it and figuring out what are the, the areas that you want the most help with. That's what you'll talk to your tutor about. That's what you need to respond to the discussion post um, about so that then I can solve those kinds of problems in Thursday's video before you take the test Thursday afternoon, okay, or Thursday whenever, um, or Friday. You can take it Friday as well. 
Okay, so I will see you back here tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit about kind of the whole unit that we've been studying and what you need to do to, to get ready for the test and do a little bit of review and, and go from there, okay? Have a great afternoon and let's close in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.